Good afternoon and welcome to Sea Fishing with CJ. As you know, I like to try and do something different and today is different again. We're, we're up next to the boat yard where, my, where I keep my boat. Uh, but we're not going out in the boat because it's too windy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a go, see if we can't get ourselves a mullet. Now, I have tried this before. They are the most frustrating of fish, without a doubt. I've had it where I've had them feeding off the bread on the surface uh, and they've eaten every single bit of bed on the surface apart from the one with a hook in it. So they're, they're very clever fish, they're very intelligent, they're, they live a long time so they're very slow growing so a big mullet has probably been around 30 or 40 years so there's probably not much that it hasn't seen. So anyway we're here and we're going to give it a go. Um, just look up the river, this is where I am. So we've got the Ouse River, the tide, is just on the flood, which means that we've got salt water coming up and they do hang around here for a bit and then they follow the tide up. So I'm gonna try and keep them here. I've got some, some ground bait made up, which is basically uh, white bread, some bran, uh, some pilchard oil. Um, what else have I got in there? Oh yeah, I've got a couple of tins of tuna that have been mashed into it. Uh, and there's the, the, the oil off my mackerel that I have for dinner today. So we was a bit of a mishmash, if you like. And when I first got here, I came down and mixed some water in that and I chucked a couple of uh, bucketfuls or spoonfuls out into the water and two big mullet appeared almost instantly. Unfortunately, I saw my silhouette on the bank and they vanished. So um, I keep myself nice and low now. Uh, I kept back from the water's edge, although obviously I'm gonna have to move back with the tide. And, and we're going to give it a go. So just tackling up now, uh, I've got three rods with me. It might be a bit overkill, but basically I've got one very flexible rod that I'm going to use um, just to float a bit of crust. I've got a longer rod that I will put a waggler throat on and we'll have a go fishing deeper when the tide gets a bit deeper. Uh, and I've got a lure rod with me because where there's mullet, quite often there's bass. And so if we see any sort of bassy swirls on the surface, we will put a lure on, or we might just put a lure on anyway and just flick a, flick a lure out for a bit. Here for a while, uh, I think high water's about eight o'clock tonight. I don't know if I'm gonna stay here that late, but we'll see. Yeah, so it's no more ado, let's get rigged up. We have a, a tiny little hook, it's a size eight. It's a wide gate carp hook, in fact. Um, to four pound fluorocarbon line, which makes me very nervous because for me, 20 pound fluorocarbon line is light. Four pound is just, there's nothing. Um, to a little anti-tangle device, a swivel, and then 20 pounds fluorocarbon above that with a sliding bubble float. And it's, it's a sliding bubble float. It's actually um, fox, fox tackle. So it's actually a carp uh, bubble float, which is Two thirds filled with water to give it a bit of weight, and so that it sinks just on, just just on the surface. And then above that is stop knot, so it won't, doesn't go too far up the line. And that's what we're fishing with. Um, the bread we're just going to fold around the hook, like that crimp it in place, and then we want to make sure that the barb of the hook is is just pricking the back of my nail there so that when the fish takes that he's going to get pricked by the hook don't want to completely push it flat because we want it to have a little bit of flotation because what i want is i want this on the surf just on the surface or just below the surface uh, and we're going to be sight watching that looking for a fish to take it so that's the plan what could go wrong so we're going to cast out to where we were um baiting the rod i'm using is is a it's actually a Shakespeare um, ugly stick, but it's a light spinning rod. 2.7 meters long, so um, whatever that is in feet. And it's, it's, a, it's for casting a fairly heavy lure. But um, what we want is we want a reel, a rod rather, that's got lots of spring in it. Because we're fishing with very light line, as we've seen. Um, we want a, a rod that's gonna absorb out before we uh, the mud on the reel and we'll just flip that out and see what happens. So the bread crust is just sinking under the surface. 
guessing this is not something that I do a lot of mallet fishing so I'm guessing that what we're looking for is we're looking for the line a bit like um, dry fly fishing we're looking for the line to suddenly shoot away keep in contact with it so make sure we're in contact with that float that's it we're in contact with the float now so we should see a tug and what we're going to do is we're going to throw some free offerings out there now as I said when I first got here I chucked out some ground bait and instantly three large mullet appeared from nowhere so they're here they're hovering around probably just just out of sight I have mullet fish before I can honestly say that I've never caught one in this country um, they are the most frustrating fish they really are canny get a few bits of on the float on the surface if you can't get the feed from the bread on the surface. Yeah, don't want to obviously don't want to overfeed them and fill them up so they're not hungry. But what we do want to do is we want to try and get them interested in. Hey, only just got here, literally only just cast out. Just chucking out a bit more ground bait. Had some activity on the surface just to the right of me. Big splash, big swirl. So the mullet are moving around. So look, there they are. <laughs> As I say, they are the most frustrating of fish. They are the most frustrating of fish. go down in there well, we missed one little tape just then but not on bread but on maddies are you getting maddies are you yeah I've got a I've got a I've got a, a couple of little ragworm and I put a two tiny little rag one here and I'd have had a take almost straight away. Yeah, but I missed it. I didn't know. Did, what's leave, leave it to develop or strike straight into it, what do you reckon? Let them run, let them run like a carp. Yeah? Let them run, yeah. Yeah, I mean my, my, my float went backwards and forwards and then I struck into it, I should have left it. They're zooming through here, I've just seen about four or five come through here. If they're, if they're here again, just here. You're just putting one on, are you? Um, no, I've been putting two on. Alright. Yeah, you just put a couple on. Alright. Yeah, I'll do them. Oh, look, right in front of me. There you are. On the slip. You try putting them on a spinner? No. Because that's, that's, that's the classic way of catching uh, thin lips. Is to draw a maddie on a on a spinner. But I just dragged that in front of those two. <laughs> they didn't even look at it. Whoa, that's more like it. There we go, mallet on. So I think I better start concentrating a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Yeah, golden grey. Yeah, oh, let's have a look. Whoop! 
spiked you. <laughs> I led it out to swear words. Yeah. yeah, I can I can get a, get a good shot from here, Lee. You don't have to come here. Beauty. Beauty. Yeah, I've, I've got. No, so I'm moving it. It's going to go on my YouTube channel. Well, we were fishing with bread. I've got a lot of bread ground bait in uh, and really I've not seen anything feeding on the bread and then a friend of mine Lee who was working on his boat said lend me a hook he came down here borrowed one of my hooks dug some harbour ragworm out of the bank and had a fish within five minutes so <laughs> we swapped over to harbour rag uh, I've had couple of little takes definitely uh, just not let them develop enough I don't think changed my tactics very slightly got rid of the bubble float which I think was offering too much resistance on the water and went over to a waggler but a waggler is literally it's not it's not set at all it's just a free lined um, worm and the waggler's on the line just to give me some sort of a bite indication um, the worm sunk to the bottom nice to avoid the blank I'm not that concerned if I get a blank to be quite honest because it's this is fun experimental fishing new stuff for me but hey it'd be nice to catch something there's a few little maddies on that hook there nicely moving around flick them out so they're over the over the slip I think bail on so if we get a run it'll take line while we're waiting let's just flick a paddle tail out to the middle of the river tide's coming in let's get the ground again we're gonna have to move up the river not too distance of time Whoops. Right, well, um, didn't catch anything. I saw one caught, which is actually quite cool, so it proves they're catchable. Uh, I learnt a lot. It's been a pleasant afternoon, pleasant way of having an afternoon's fishing when it's too windy to be on the beach. Um, well, it's not too windy to be on the beach, but it'll be too windy to be comfortable on the beach. Uh, tide has come way in now, uh, well covering where I first started out. Um, yeah, that was a good, good evening, and I will repeat this. I've had some little tips and some little ideas um, and I think I know what I'm going to do next time which will be slightly different. But yeah, good evening, had by all. I don't class it as a blank, I class it as a learning exercise. Fantastic. Right, well, good morning and welcome again to um, Sea Fishing with CJ. This is episode two or phase two of my mullet adventure come down um, early morning on the rising tide um, to have another go with um, some maddies to catch one of these elusive mullet uh, looking at the water it's very coloured at the moment I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing uh, it means that I'm not quite so visible to the fish but it might mean the fish aren't here <laughs> so we'll find out in a little while um, I'm going to free line some maddies so basically I've got the same size 8 hook but now it's on a four a four pound breaking strain leader which is just leader knotted onto my my main line 
so there's nothing between me and the, uh, the bait. So make it a bit challenging to cast it, but we'll give it a go. There is some interesting big movements there. There's some mullet, mullet moving on the surface just there. I don't know if you'll see them. I'll get the bigger camera out in a minute. But there are some mullet moving around. So kind of quietly confident that we'll, we'll, let, we'll get a result. There's a little bit of uh, troubled water there as well, something on the surface there. So there is, there is mullet moving around, I feel. So fingers crossed, see if we can't catch one this time. The bait that we're using today is Maddie's and I managed to buy some Maddie's in uh, Tools and Tackle in New Haven which they've just started to get in and they're nice looking Maddie's and very very lively so that's what we want, we want a lively bait, I'm going to be putting a couple on the hook uh, and, and as I say flicking those out as far as we can which won't be very far and free lining them for the elusive mullet. Nice and wriggly, these worms. That's what we want to see. Look at that. So, nothing more to do, let's get that out in the water. Desired species, but little bass, little schoolie. Well, we're catching a lot of these. Um, <laughs> they're not the target species, that's for sure. Right, little male shore crab. I'm sure, he would like to get hold of me with his nippers. Well, so far, we've caught one little tiddly bass. Um, I had one possible run and lots of frustration. But hey, it's, the tide's not fully in yet. We'll keep on fishing till it is. Uh, they've got plenty of maddies. It's nice to be out in the fresh air. I wonder whether to put a waggler on and just bob it along on a waggler, but the consensus is that that spooks them, so no, stick with it, stick with the plan, stick with the plan. Your shadow stretching on the floor while the sun gets low. I got a feeling. <laughs> Another little schoolie. Nice to land this one this time. Not a blank. It's not a blank. <laughs> not the target species, but hey, it's not a blank. Oop, go home. You grow up to be a big, big bat. Go on. Ah. There he goes. Gone. Sport on a light um, spinning rod, that would be, wouldn't it? Small lures.
obstacles that we faced did ever slow us down. We knew we'd get here, went the extra mile in every race. We are duty bound. We push it right. Chuck. Well, seems the elusive mullet have eluded me again. Um, all I can say is to be continued. I am determined to get one. Uh, and, and I'd like to catch one here from the slip. They're here. They're not here in vast numbers, but they are here. Uh, and they are catchable because we saw that yesterday. So, um, yeah, keep on, keep on. That's all I can say. Uh, next time I'm going to come down here, uh, I will have some uh, Polaroid sunglasses with me because I can't see through the, the surface sheen. Uh, and let's hope we get a bit more clear with clarity in the water. Um, the winds are scheduled to die away, but not for a few more days. So we're still going to have murky water, I think. Um, yeah, tight lines. It wasn't a blank. We had two little schoolies, uh, one which I managed to get on camera, uh, which is a result. The tide is now well and truly in. And uh, yeah, I think the mullet, well, I know the mullet move up the river with the, top, with the high tide, so they're probably up that way now. There's probably quite a few of them up that way now. Um, and then they'll come back down on the ebb but I'm not staying that long. I'm gonna go home, I've got some work to do and start putting together the edit on this film. Right, I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen, um, albeit <laughs> nearly a blank, uh, target species not achieved. Tight lines and uh, keep fishing. Oh, and remember, support your local tackle shop. I'm going to my local tackle shop in a minute, see if I can't get some black lug because I'm gonna have a session on the beach tonight. So